Well, good morning, everyone. This is Mike Romalek here with the Hurricane Season 2020 Update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for July 31st, 2020, recorded on 11.15 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, beginning with Hurricane Isaias. This became a hurricane last night. Has weakened some uh, maximum sustained winds of 75 miles per hour, pressure of a thousand or 992 millibars, rather. And a couple of things have gone on today. First of all, we do have uh, hurricane warnings for all of the Bahamas at this point. Hurricane warnings even for the Southern Turks and Caicos down here. Tropical storm warnings have been hoisted for portions of south uh, the Southern Florida Peninsula. Hurricane watches now have been issued as of the 11 o'clock advisory from Deerfield Beach to the Volusia Bavard County line. And we'll take a look at that here in a map uh, towards the end of this video. Uh, this is coming a little bit closer uh, and taking more of a west track. We'll also talk about that here in a couple of moments. But again, this is going to get dangerously close to the Florida um, to the Florida coastline here, and it is possible this could make landfall as a hurricane uh, on approach into Florida on the extreme eastern side. Again, uh, it depends on how far west this gets in the short term and how strong or weak it is. Uh, within the terms there uh, then continuing on again we really have to watch this for impacts down the road to South Carolina and North Carolina again this is going to come pretty close to Florida on its current track and then uh, turn in and could make landfall here as a hurricane in South Carolina or North Carolina by later this week here so we have a lot that we need to talk about uh, when we get into it now, the aircraft reconnaissance plane that was in there from earlier, they might be done. I, they probably are done at the moment. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but again, they did find that these pressures have been pretty consistent about uh, 995 to 996. Now, those were within about 20 knots of flight of uh, surface winds where those drop sons uh, came out of the plane and reached to the surface. They were still getting about 20 knots of wind or so. So if you convert that down, that roughly correlates to a pressure of about 992 millibars, and that's what we're seeing. You notice on the first pass through, they didn't find any hurricane flight level winds, uh, but on the second pass through, they did find uh, some hurricane flight level winds here as it came on their last kind of leg here. So this is indicative that the storm is trying to strengthen a little bit uh, on approach. Again, this is the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos right here, and this is trying to strengthen a tad bit, and the official forecast calls for some additional strengthening to near a category two hurricane uh, on approach into the Baha uh, on approach into the northern Bahamas and Florida here. So for you folks down here in uh, Florida, not only Florida but uh, Marsh Harbor, uh, Grand Bahama Island, uh, Nassau, you now need. It's imperative that you finish your final preparations today. If you live in Florida, you have uh, about, especially in Southeast Florida, you have only until uh, late tonight and early tomorrow morning to finish your final preparations. So with that being said, get your final preparations done now. If you are living out here in the Carolinas, you need to start thinking about your preparations and start putting your hurricane preparedness plans into place. Although there's no official watches or warnings yet, you now need to start to think about this and the potential uh, to have a hurricane making landfall in the Carolinas within about three to four days or so. Very important you understand that. So what's going on out there right now? Well, if you take a look here, this is uh, from our AWIPS software, our uh, AWIPS software uh, by uh, Unidata and uh, their associated uh, Rathion partners. Again, what you can see here is that we had a pretty lackluster convective burst earlier. And if we kind of bring this into, uh, into, into focal point here, we'll stop the loop on that. If we kind of go back here to uh, not too long ago, this was from about... Um, about 1059, you notice that there was a pretty good convective burst that was occurring. There still is that pretty good convective burst, and we had a problem where the sensor was not really uh, was was exposed earlier this uh, this morning, and that's kind of uh, since changed. Again, we don't have much of an exposed sensor anymore. You can see that we do have a lot of convection and uh, clouds kind of associated with that. Again, this is kind of our sensor somewhere right in here. Now there is some southwestern shear that's being imparted on this system. Here's the Turks and Caicos and the associated islands out here. Again, this is battering 
those areas with these gusty squalls producing uh, hurricane force gusts at times, certainly at a tropical storm force. Uh, but you notice that we do have some dry air on the western side that's being entrained in a little bit. But there is a moisture environment kind of sitting down throughout here, especially out in this region. And that's helping to kind of pull in some of the moisture air, allowing these convective bursts to kind of fire. And if we take a look here from tropicaltippets.com and their IR satellite, you notice that we did have a pretty good convective burst earlier. And that has kind of since waned off a little bit. Uh, but again, that convective burst expanding out pretty rapidly in most areas. We just have to wait for it to load, and sometimes it doesn't. So if it doesn't, there it goes. So you can see we still have a pretty good convective burst with our tops approaching about minus 80 degrees Celsius out here on these cloud tops. So that in, is indicative that we have very strong uh, clouds, uh, very strong cloud tops, very deep convection firing almost near the center of circulation. Again, very disheveled right now, almost like with what we saw with Gonzalo. Uh, but you have to keep in mind here, this is a much larger envelope of energy than Gonzalo. Although, you know, the core here is not very, um, it's a lot more consolidated than about a thousand miles here. So uh, that is something that we'll have to watch. That If this dry air and shear can really win the battle, this might be a weaker system. You notice this is Florida right here. That's the Florida Keys in the, in the Miami area out here. Uh, this is the Bahamas, uh, Nassau, you know, the the islands out here the tourist attractions and the islands so it's something to keep in mind because this is moving due west and eventually we'll be turning northwest here uh getting close here uh to more of the bahamas here over the next few days or so if you take a look at what's going on right now with the wind field, again, this is a pretty large wind field, although the, the hurricane force winds don't extend out very far. This is still a very uh, broad wind field. And again, we're seeing uh, almost sustained tropical storm force winds here uh, all the way into the southern tip of Cuba here. Again, this came off of uh, Dominican Republic uh, yesterday, kind of bounced around a little bit, now moving uh, due uh, west-northwest here. And again, it, this is going to really matter how far west this gets uh, before finally kind of taking its north jog here. And again, the stronger the system is, the further east it's going to go. And conversely, the further, uh, the, the weaker the storm is, the further west it's going to go. So for that reason, and due to the west, uh, the westward shift in the models, there is no, uh, there's, there is now a requirement and no other way around it that hurricane watches are now having to be posted uh, for the portions of the Florida east coast here. Now, if we take a look here at the model tracks, and a couple of things that I really want to point out here is just because you see that this is basically turning away, that doesn't necessarily imply that this is high confidence. And that's why Levi up here put, do not use this for decision making. Seek the official in information from the Hurricane Center and your local officials. And that is, is very important. These only show where the possible center tracks are. This does not imply where the impacts are going to be felt uh, uh, well away from the center of circulation. Again, where the center goes now, uh, with how close it is relative to Florida, uh, this is very concerning. And there is also a, a problem here because this could eventually make landfall. It may go further to the east. And you see where the kind of the, the envelope of track guidance really is now. The envelope of track guidance is basically within here that there if Florida coast, you know, skirt here or possible landfall is on the table. Now, again, if it made landfall, it'd probably be a little bit weaker, but a weaker storm does not necessarily mean better because that can dump a lot of rainfall, gusty winds, power outages, that sort of thing is still going to happen even if it is a weaker system. But right now, all indications are it's going to struggle a little bit down through this area, so it's not going to have a chance to rapidly intensify much. But again, this still could go right over the Grand Bahama Island and is going to get dangerously close to South Carolina and North Carolina here as we on throughout time. So why is that? What, what's going on here? Well, first of all, this is the GFS forecast, a, a kind of a zoomed in shot here regarding a tropical or Hurricane Isaias. And we'll take a look here at the MSLP here and wind, which is the MSLP down here in the, the center low and the wind field out here. Again, that's the wind field as of 7 a.m. this morning. And we'll kind of move this forward to the next 24 hours. And again, uh, Isaias struggles to intensify much in this region because again there is some southwesterly shear being imparted on this and some dry air and again because of the orientation that the storm is moving 
the storm is trying to move more this way but you're getting more of a flow like this over the system that's shearing some of this uh you know that's shearing the system and tilting the vortex over uh, to a point where it is more likely to ingest that dry air kind of lurking around uh, but regardless you know this is still maintaining as a, a stronger tropical storm or a hurricane as it approaches the florida coastline and again that is only on the gfs here about 47 to 50 nautical miles or about 50 to 55 miles off the florida coast here uh by uh saturday night into sunday again the, the gfs is a little bit faster but you notice that stays dangerously close to florida here so what's really going on with the steering flow well what we're taking a look at here is the european 500 millibar uh, anomaly or the 500 millibar geopotential height here uh, basically your darker colors your darker reds and uh, lighter reds are your higher pressures and subsequently your uh, oranges and greens are lower pressures so this is uh, valid or initialized the analysis point was at about zero z uh, friday or this is eight o'clock last night and again you notice how the, these high pressures here dominating this area now what's going to end up happening is this trough this first trough right here is digging in and eroding the northern part of this ridge right here so if we go out to 24 hours from now you notice now how the ridge has kind of started to erode a tad bit but not a lot but now we're getting a reinforcement uh, right here this is our next trough uh, wave that we're kind of dealing with right here that's going to be scooting in really down eroding down this trough again this is the kind of the outline of the subtropical ridge right here it's a little bit weaker because of this right here but the models underdo the strength of this ridge so we don't have upper level recon out there to sample the storm environment ahead of it we get that later today or tonight or during the day tomorrow i think we get it early or late tonight into tomorrow once that gets assimilated into the models then we will have a better understanding we're getting a more clear picture now of what's going to happen down the road but there's so much uncertainty in this forecast because it's a very complex situation that we're dealing with now on the, the european here it gets a dangerously close to the florida peninsula here again or the florida coast again this is the outline of the ridge now you notice that the ridge is now starting to erode a little bit uh, but it's still forcing, it's kind of going around the tip of this ridge. It's still forcing it. And this trough isn't necessarily here to kind of pick it up yet. Now, if we go out here to 72 hours, again, it's just hugging that coastline. That ridge is continuously trying to build over top of it. This trough still is not picking it up as much. And again, if we just kind of back that out to the last about two model runs, if it will load, the, the Euro almost showed nothing here. The, the Euro at this didn't even show a storm. And so it's now how to correct uh, to a storm in this environment with a stronger ridge of high pressure across this area and a trough that is uh, that is still moving at the same pace but this is moving a little bit slower eventually by 96 hours now the trough is here to pick it up but that ridge doesn't want to budge that much so this is a problem because this has the potential to allow the storm to not gain as much latitude before uh, going into the central bahamas here and if that happens that means that you know the central east central bahamas here west central bahamas and then into florida you know this is still a very significant possibility that florida may still see a landfalling hurricane or tropical storm um you know by saturday night into sunday with impacts continuing into early monday so for you folks that live not only in the bahamas in the bahamas we harp this enough you need to be prepared now for you know a hurricane to come roaring you know roaring through within the next you know 24 to 36 hours beyond that looking downstream a little bit florida the florida east coast you're now in the potential to see hurricane conditions within the next 48 hours or so so that's important because that's a change from yesterday where the strongest winds were expected to stay offshore now those hurricane force winds could be pushing onshore and that could be a problem beach erosion uh, you know you're talking heavier rain that's all now starting to come into play and then of course if it goes without saying if you live in the carolinas 
you need to have a hurricane preparedness plan ready to go now because it's only about you know two and a half to three to four days away so if you live in those areas that i'm just calling out now take your hurricane preparedness plans now don't wait until the last minute don't wait until a day prior do it now while you still have time and it greatly increases the odds of your survival especially if you live along the coast but not just along the coast inland impacts are going to be felt even in florida if this does scoot even 50 miles offshore there will be impacts to the florida coast here it's almost undoubted that you're going to have some sort of impact so that remains to be seen but again the western coast or the, the eastern coast of florida you need to be monitored now if you live over here on the western peninsula you know on the western peninsula over towards gulf of mexico tampa bay region yes i would keep monitoring the progress of this yes you will get some impacts some gusty winds at times maybe some heavier rain but in terms of the stronger winds those are going to be from uh probably the orange county the orange osceola seminole lake county lines to the east anywhere from sumter polk westward over towards uh, hernando hillsboro sarasota those areas will probably not see as great of impacts as from lake orange seminole osceola eastward that is the biggest thing right now now if we take a look here at the h wharf just real quickly again the h wharf shows a pretty similar scenario with the hurricane you know approaching the bahamas and just kind of skirting the, the you know the the east coast of florida here so again very imperative that you guys understand that just because it's not explicitly shown doesn't mean that we can't have a landfall if you live in south carolina and north carolina you need to be paying attention the bahamas it goes without saying the turks and caicos obviously so for that reason our wind threat again this is not official i want to point that out this is not an official map here this is a map made by me to kind of convey my greatest concerns with the, the with the wind our lowest potential here is in this very light shade here which indicates almost you know less than 39 per hour, mile per hour sustained winds the darker yellows which is right here the the low indicators about 39 to 53 and the moderate uh, colors here or the oranges are about 59 to 73 mi or yeah 59 to 73 miles per hour just below hurricane force we have nudged those slightly over back towards the west here because of the change in track but again not an official map here if you guys want official information please consult the national hurricane center and your local weather service office for the latest information regarding hurricane isaias all right so that's going to be it for me for right now again you can see those hurricane watches now that have been posted tropical storm warnings including bureau beach ports uh, uh, fort pierce and stewart Hurricane watches including Palm Bay, Melbourne, and Titusville. These will likely be extended to tropical storm warnings for uh, Orange County here, Seminole, Volusia counties uh, right here. Again, that is something we will have to monitor over the, the next few days or so. All right. I will be staying on top of this. Of course, I will be doing about three updates a day now. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, I will have another uh, forecast update later uh, this afternoon. All right. Hope you all stay safe. I'll be back later this afternoon. Don't forget, we will be setting up our unmanned live camera systems to cover the progress of Hurricane Isaias. Those live cameras will be going up later, uh, probably closer within the next couple of, uh, next about 15 hours or so, once we see the progression of Isaias. All right, hope you all stay safe, everyone, and I will see you back here around 3 o'clock Eastern time. Stay safe, everyone. Have a good night, or have a good day, rather.